May it please the court, my lady and learned assessors, I appear for the state with my colleague, Ms. Johnson. Mr. Oldwage and I appear on behalf of the uh, accused and the attorneys, Ramsey Weber, are also present in court. Thank you very much. May it please the court, my lady, we are ready to proceed. Are you ready? We are ready to yes. proceed. Just a few housekeeping issues. The proceedings are in English. Fortunately, we have a team of interpreters who will assist us so that every one of us understands what is going on. Secondly, the starting hours is still something that we're going to work on. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. It was supposed to have been 10 in the morning. Unfortunately, there were hiccups. That's why we're only starting now. But we shall sort this out during the course of the day, what hours we will be starting. As a good business. And the third thing, I'm sitting with assessors, and I would like to swear them in. Please stand up for the record. Please state your full names. Do you have any objection against taking the oath? No. Do you swear that you will on the evidence placed upon you give a true verdict upon the issues to be tried? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Please stand for the oath. State your full names for the record. Tamba Simon Masibo. Do you have any objection against taking the oath? No. Do you swear that you will, on the evidence placed before you, give a true verdict upon the issues to be tried? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Yes, Mr. Nell. I please the court, lady. Would the court prefer that I read out the charges against the accused? Yes, the accused is English speaking. Indeed, my lady. Yes, yes, you may do so. The first count against the accused, count one, is one of murder, read with the provisions of section 511 of Act 105 of 1997. In that, upon or about 14 February 2013, and at or near 286, Bush Willow Street, Silverwoods Country Estate, Silver Lakes, in the District of Pretoria, the accused did unlawfully and intentionally kill a person to wit Riva Stienka, a 29-year-old female. Yes. That is count one. That's count one. Yes. Do you understand the charges, Mr. Pistorius? I do. I do, my lady. How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. Thank you. My please, the good lady, count number two. Contravention of Section 127 of the Firearms Control Act, Act Number 60 of 2000. In that, the accused is guilty of the offence of contravention, of contravening the provisions of Section 127, right with Section 1, 103, 120, 1A, Section 121, right with Schedule 4, and Section 151 of the Firearms Control Act 60 of 2000, discharge of a firearm in a build-up area or any public place. My lady, I have to start the proceedings by asking that this charge be amended. Yes. There's a type, type er typing error. Yes. I'll read it. In that, on or upon 30 September 2012, my lady, the indictment reads 2010, and that's uh, just a typing error, as can be seen from the alternative count. There's a reference to 2012. Yes, so it should be amended to 2010. 30 September 2012, my lady. 12? Yes, my lady. That's the first, oh yes, I'm looking at the wrong one. That's count number two. Indeed, my lady. Okay, it is amended. I, I'll then read it again. I should have In asked if there are any objections. There is no objection, thank no you, objection. my lady. Thank you very much. I'll yes. then uh, read it again, my lady. In that, on or about 30 September 2012, and whilst driving in a vehicle with other passengers on a public road at or near Modafontein in the district of Kempton Park, the accused did unlawfully discharge a firearm without good reason to do so by firing a shot with his own 9mm pistol through the open sunroof of the car they were travelling in. How do you, do you understand the charge? I do, my lady. How do you plead? Uh, not guilty, my lady. Thank you. The lady count two has an alternative contravention of section 123B of the Firearms Control Act, number 60 of 2000. 
that the accused is guilty of the offence of contravening the provisions of section 123b, rate right, was sections 1, 103, 121a, section 121, rate right, was schedule 4, and section 151 of the Firearms Control Act 60 of 2000, reckless endangerment, that reads, in that on or about 30 September 2012, an Athenaeum Modifontine in this district of Kempton Park, the accused in circumstances mentioned in count two above, discharged a firearm to with his 9mm pistol with reckless disregard for the other passengers in the car and all people in the vicinity. Do you understand the charge that has been read out? How do you, my lady? How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. Thank you. This is a good, my lady, count three. That's a contravention of section 127 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000. That the accused is guilty of the offence of contravening the provisions of section 127, read for section 1, 103, 121A, section 121, read for schedule 4, and section 151 of the Firearms Control Act 60 of 2000, discharge mm -hmm. of a firearm in a build-up area or any public place. The charge reads, my lady, in that during January 2013, and at Tasha's restaurant Melrose Arch in the district of Johannesburg, the accused unlawfully discharged a firearm to with a Glock 27 pistol without any good reason to do so. <coughs> Tasha's restaurant is a public place. You've had the charge that was just read out. Do you understand the charge? I do, my lady. How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. Thank you. There's an alternative to count three, a first alternative, my lady. Contravention of section 123A of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000. That the accused is guilty of the offence of contravening the provisions of section 123A, read for section 1, 103, 121A, section 121, Read for Schedule 4 and Section 151 of Firearms Control Act 60 of 2000, negligent damage to property. In that, on or about January 2013, an near Tasha's restaurant, Melros Arch, in the district of Johannesburg, the accused negligently used a firearm to wit a Glock 27 pistol and caused damage to the floor of the restaurant. Do you understand the, the alternative count? I do, my lady. How do you plead? I'm not guilty, my lady. Lady, there's a second alternative to count three. Contravention of section 123B of the Firearms Control Act, number 60 of 2000. That the accused is guilty of the offence of contravening the provisions of section 123B, read to sections 1, 103, 121A, section 121, read to schedule 4, and section 151 of the Firearms Control Act 60 of 2000, reckless endangerment. In that, on or about January 2013, and at or near Tasha's restaurant, Melrose Arch, in the district of Johannesburg, the accused discharged a firearm to wit a Glock 27 pistol at the table in the restaurant amongst other patrons in a manner likely to endanger the safety of the people at his table and or other patrons and the property of the restaurant. The accused had, in discharging the firearm that was mentioned, shown a reckless disregard for the safety of the patrons or property of the restaurant. Do you understand the count? I do, my lady. How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. Thank you. My lady, and then finally, count four. <coughs> Contravention of section 90 of the Firearms Control Act, number 60 of 2000. That the accused is guilty of the offence of contravening the provisions of section 90, read to section 1, 103, 117, 121A, section 121, Read with the Schedule 4 and Arms Control Act 60 of 2000 and further read with Section 250 of the Criminal Procedure Act 51 of 1977, Possession of Ammunition Related. It reads, in that, on or about 16 February 2013, an at or near 286 Bushwiller, Bushwiller Street, Silverwoods Country Estate, Silver Lakes, in the District of Pretoria, the accused that unlawfully have in his possession ammunition to wit 38 0.38 rounds without being the holder of a license in respect of the firearm capable of discharging the ammunition, a permit to possess ammunition, C, permit to possess ammunition, C, a dealer's license, manufacturer's license, gunsmith license, import, export, or in transit permit, or a transporter's permit issued in terms of the Act or D, or is otherwise authorized to do so. Right, that's count four, and that's 
complete the indictment. Yes. How do you understand count four? Guilty, my lady. How do you plead? Not guilty, my lady. Not guilty. Mr. Rue, is this in accordance with your instruction? That, that is indeed, sir. Thank you, my lady. Any explanation of My lady, plea? Mr. Oldwaits will do the, uh, read the explanation into the record. Thank you very much. My lady, with the court's leave, I propose to hand up three original versions of the section 115 plea explanation, yes. which have been signed, as you will note, on the last page of the document by our client. We also favor the state with a copy of this very same document. Yes, please proceed. Yes, you may. Your ladyship's leave. Might I then proceed to read it into the record? Yes. I'm indebted. In the High Court of South Africa, Gauteng Division, Pretoria, case number CC113-13, in the matter between the State and Oscar Leonard Carl Pistorius, the accused, explanation of plea in terms of section 115 of Act 51 of 1977, I, the undersigned Oscar Leonard Carl Pistorius, hereby furnish following explanation of plea with reference to the charges to which I plead not guilty. At count one, murder, read with the provisions of section 51, subsection one of Act 105 of 1977. Paragraph one, in its formulation of this count, the state has contended that I unlawfully and intentionally killed Reba Steenkamp, hereinafter referred to as Reba. Paragraph two, this allegation is denied in the strongest terms. In fact, at the time of the tragic accident which led to Reva's death, we were in a loving relationship. Paragraph 3. Whilst I admit that I inflicted the fatal gunshot wounds to Reva, this occurrence was indeed an accident in that I had mistakenly believed that an intruder or intruders had entered my home and posed an imminent threat to Reva and me. Paragraph 4. In my application for bail, I concisely dealt with the events of 14 February 2013. I am advised that I will have an opportunity to deal with a comprehension version of the events when I testify. For purposes of my plea explanation, I emphasize the following. Paragraph 4.1. During the early hours of the morning, I brought two fans in from the balcony. I had shortly before spoken to Reva, who was in bed beside me. 4.2. Unbeknown to me, Reva must have gone to the toilet in the bathroom at the time when I brought the fans, brought in the fans, closed the sliding doors, and drew the blinds and the curtains. 4.3. I heard the bathroom window sliding open. I believe that an intruder or intruders had entered the bathroom through the bathroom window which was not fitted with burglar bars. 4.4. I approached the bathroom armed with my firearm so as to defend Reva and I. At that time, I believe Reba was still in the bed. 4.5. The discharging of my firearm was precipitated by a noise in the toilet, which I, in my fearful state, knowing that I was on my stumps, unable to run away or properly defend myself physically, believed to be the intruder or intruders coming out of the toilet to attack Reva and me. Paragraph 5. I respectfully, sub I respectfully believe that the state has no basis whatsoever for alleging that I wanted to take Reva's life. I will demonstrate hereunder that notwithstanding the fact that all the objective evidence will corroborate my version of the events, the state has embarked on a strategy to rely on unsubstantiated allegations in an endeavor to prove that I wanted to kill Reva. Paragraph 6. The strategy was also employed at my bail application. I will hereunder concisely deal with some of the material aspects to support my contention herein. Paragraph 7. At my bail application, the state inter alia contended that I deliberately shot Reva whilst I was positioned at a distance of about 1.5 meters from the toilet door and whilst I was standing on my prosthesis. The allegation with reference to 1.5 meters and me wearing my prosthesis was clearly designed to suggest that I had pursued Reva to the toilet and that I therefore knew that Reva was in the toilet. 
thus that I did not entertain any fear at a time when it is alleged that I entered the bathroom. Paragraph 8. The state is also by means of the evidence of the then investigating officer Hilton Buerta sought to rely on a statement by a witness who I am told is a certain Estelle van der Merwe who claims to have heard between the applicant and the deceased and the evidence might point in that way, unquote. This witness has since deposed to a further statement which materially contradicts her first statement. In the further and better particulars, the state disavows reliance on the first statement. The state has also conceded in the further and better particulars that they are not aware of any of the detail regarding, in brackets, the alleged argument and that it may become clear during the trial. Paragraph 10. Van der Merwe's house is located approximately 105 meters from my bedroom with my bedroom and bathroom windows facing in the opposite direction to Van der Merwe's house. It would not have been possible for Van der Merwe to have heard anyone talking from my bedroom in their bedroom. The state is furthermore in possession of statements by a number of witnesses, including witnesses resident in either the estate where I reside or in an adjacent estate. None of these witnesses claim to have heard any argument between Reva and I, nor any woman's voice talking prior to the shooting notwithstanding the fact that two of the witnesses, open brackets, who live in closer proximity to my house than Van der Merwe, close brackets, were awake at the time when Van der Merwe alleged that she had heard a woman's voice. Paragraph 11. I refer to the above as the state now alleges and the further particulars provided that there was, in fact, an argument between Reva and I and that I killed Reva, in quotes, because of the argument, unquote. I am unable to comprehend on what basis the state, brackets at the bail application, close brackets, could only rely on a possibility of an argument between Reva and I, and now with even less available evidence, brackets, by disavowing Van der, Van der Merwe's first statement, close brackets, alleged that there was in fact an argument, and that I shot Reva, in quotes, because of the argument, unquote. Paragraph 12. I deny this allegation and reiterate that there is no justification, whether legally or factually, for this unfair and incorrect allegation to have been made. The aforesaid allegation is also not supported by any of the statements disclosed to me by the state. Paragraph 13. Furthermore, Contrary to what was contended for by the state during the bail application, the state has now conceded that it cannot be contended as a fact that I was about 1.5 meters from the toilet door and that I had my prosthesis attached at the time when I discharged the firearm anymore. Paragraph 14. The unfair approach adopted by the state is further evident from the evidence given by Hilton Buerta at the bail application, whose evidence will be demonstrated to have been false in material respects. More particularly, that it was designed to falsely incriminate me on an allegation of premeditated murder. It will also be demonstrated during this trial that whilst Buerta was the investigating officer and tasked with preserving the scene, that the scene was contaminated, disturbed, and tampered with. This feature of the state's case will be dealt with when Boerter, amongst others, gives evidence. Paragraph 15. I have been led to understand that it is unusual to challenge the state's case in my plea explanation to the extent that I do herein. However, I am left with no alternative but to explain my innocence with reference to the allegations leveled against me. The foregoing will be exposed by having regard to the state's intended approach in this trial. This approach is to not only seek to unfairly draw inferences from purported statements of fact, which are not supported by the objective facts, but also by virtue of the statements disclosed to me by the state, 
to seek to introduce inadmissible character evidence under the guise that such inadmissible evidence would be admissible similar fact evidence to demonstrate that there was an alleged nexus between the brackets inadmissible close brackets character evidence and the brackets non-existing close brackets argument which allegedly led to me killing Riva paragraph 16 I am furthermore advised that as the state is aware of the fact that it has no evidence to prove an alleged argument and in particular in view of the fact that the state has conceded that it does not know what the features or import of such alleged argument would have been the only intended purpose of an attempt to introduce inadmissible character evidence would be to engineer and bring about an inadmissible attempt at assassination of my character. I'm advised that during the conduct of the trial, my legal representatives will object to the introduction of such inadmissible character evidence on the basis as stated above. Paragraph 17. I respectfully state that no truthful evidence can ever be tendered that I fired the shots, and I quote, because of the argument Unquote. I deny this allegation in the strongest terms because there was no argument. Paragraph 18. The allegation that I wanted to shoot, in brackets, or kill, close brackets, the river, cannot be further from the truth. Add count two. Contraventions of section 120, subsection 7 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000. Alternatively, to count to a contravention of section 120, subsection 3, sub sub paragraph B of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, and paragraph 19, the allegations as formulated in the, indi formulated in the indictment with reference to this count, and the alternative count thereto are denied. Add count 3, contravention of section 120, subsection 7 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, the first alternative to count three, contravention of section 120, subsection three, sub sub paragraph A of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, as well as the second alternative to count three, the contravention of section 120, subsection four, sub sub paragraph A of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, as per paragraph 20, I admit that whilst I was in possession of the firearm as alleged, a shot went off. Save as aforesaid, the remaining allegations is contained in this count are denied. Add count four. Contravention of section 90 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000 as contained in paragraph 21. I admit that at all times relevant to this count, I had not been issued with a license to possess .38 caliber rounds of ammunition. Save as aforesaid, the remaining allegations as contained in this count are denied. My lady and learned assessors, that then, the plea explanation as envisaged in terms of section 115 of the Criminal Procedure Act, the statement before you with respect has been signed by my client. He will no doubt confirm that in due course on this very day, the 3rd of March, 2014. As your ladyship please. Thank you very much. Mr. Pistorius, do you confirm the explanation as I read out? I confirm, my lady. Thank you very much. My lady, might I then quickly request that an exhibit number be allocated to the plea yes. explanation? Yes, what do you suggest we give it? Uh, may we? Um, AA, my lady. A -A. I, I suggest AA. Yes, this is exhibit AA. Yes, Mr. Neff. Uh, lady, as is accustomed in, in matters, uh, there are certain, section, certain admissions in terms of Section 220 of the Criminal Procedure Act. Yes. Uh, my lady, we've prepared files. Uh, I beg leave to hand them in, and then I'll read the uh, admissions into the record. My lady, it comprises two sets of files. I'm so sorry. May, may the accused be seated? Yes, please. yes, please. You Thank may you. be seated.
Is it two files? It's two files for each, for each. Uh, member of the bench. Thank you. Lady, I'll take the court through the admissions. Yes, uh, the admissions is drafted on a document, and we beg leave to hand that up as Exhibit A. The document containing the admissions would then be marked as Exhibit A, Malay. Yes, this is Exhibit A. And it reads: Admissions into Section 220 of the Criminal Procedure Act, 51 of 77. The guest makes the following admissions, as far as count one is concerned. The deceased in the matter is Riva Rebecca Steenkamp in a lifetime an adult female. The deceased died on the 14th of February 2013 as a result of, as a result of multiple gunshot wounds sustained on the same day and at the location described as 286 Bushwiller Street, Silverwoods Country Estate, Silver Lakes, Pretoria. Number three, my lady, the gunshot wounds sustained by the deceased were inflicted by the accused. Number four, the body of the deceased sustained no further injuries from the time of her death until the post-mortem examination was conducted on her body. Number five, on 14 February 2013, the accused was resident at 286 Bushwillow Street, Silverwoods Country Estate, Silver Lakes in Pretoria. Number six, Mulaney, on 15 February 2013, Dr. Gert Simon conducted the post-mortem examination on the body of the deceased and correctly recorded his findings on form GW7-15 <coughs> with reference to the death register number 0188 of 13, a copy which is annexed here to mark Exhibit B. Lady in the one file under Exhibit B would then be the post-mortem report. Yes. Uh, I beg leave that that then be marked as Exhibit B. This is Exhibit B. As God pleases. Seven, the photo album, album 13, images 1103 to 1130, compiled by Warrant Officer von Staden, depict images of photographs taken during the post mortem examination, annexed here to its exhibit C. Lady, in the file it's marked C, I beg leave that it be marked C as exhibit C. That's the photo album. 13. That's a photo album of the post mortem examination. Yes. Related. This is exhibit C. As it pleases. Number eight, the accused formally applied for bail in Victoria Magistrates Court. A copy of the transcript of the bail proceedings is annexed here to as exhibit D and is a true reflection of the proceedings and the evidence led. My lady, the second file is the bail application. And that should be marked with this respectfully request as Exhibit D. This is marked Exhibit D. As the court pleases. Number nine. The accused was legally represented throughout his bail application by Advocate Drew Essie and Advocate Aldrich. On the instruction of Ramsey Weber attorneys and all the accused rights and consequences of his actions in relation to the bail application as provided for in terms of section 60 of the current procedure act number 51 of 77 we explained to him he understood same the record is accepted as being admissible as evidence number 10 the photo album album one attached here to this e lady it's in the file under e i beg leave that that then be marked my lady as exhibit e This is Exhibit E. The admission reads further. Photo album 1 attached here to this Exhibit E, images 1 to 171, compiled by Warrant Officer Van Staden, is comprised of photographs taken at 286 Bushwiller Street, Silverwoods Country Estate, Silver Lakes, Pretoria, provided that it's not admitted that all the photographs in the series depict the scene as it appeared immediately after the shooting incident, as the scene was contaminated and or disturbed and or tampered with. Contamination and or disturbance and or tampering with the scene will be dealt with on behalf of the accused during the cross-examination of Hilton Puerta, who was the investigating officer and the person who took charge of the scene. Such contamination and or disturbance and or tampering with the scene will also be demonstrated by having regard to other photographs, including certain photographs in the series number 172 to 914. 
My lady, in terms of the admission, the photographs admitted, but not as uh, a true reflection without being tampered with, and, and that is how it's understood by the state, that it's admitted with, with that um, proviso. 11, the photo album 11, attached here to as annexure F, my lady, if I refer to the file again, under the red F, that photo album, it's indicated photo album 11, if that could be marked as Exhibit F, my lady. This is Exhibit F. Good, please. Photo album 11 attached here to Exhibit F, images 915 to 951, <coughs> compiled by Warrant Officer Van Staden, depicts aerial photographs of the accused <coughs> residential estate, as well as certain distances recorded thereon, between the accused house and the houses of certain witnesses. It will be, my lady, again a, a typing error, it should read, it will be alleged by the accused that such distances were not measured to the balcony door of the main bedroom of the accused residence. May I respectfully request that the word alleged be entered. Inserted. Yes. Please proceed. Please, number 12. Photo album 14 attached here to as exhibit G, images 1131 to 1141, compiled by Warrant Officer Van Staden, depicts photographs taken at Tasha's restaurant in Melrose Arch. My lady, it's filed under G. I respectfully request that it be marked as exhibit G. My lady. Yes, this is exhibit G. The photo album 15, that here to us exhibit H, images 1142 to 1147, compiled by Warrant Officer Van Staden, the big photographs taken at the R25 and M78 roads, Lorry Road, Modafonte. But it's filed in, in the file as exhibit H. I respectfully request that it be marked as exhibit H. I see H1. Uh, my lady, that's, that's how they, they did it. It's H and I. I'm not using I. Oh, I see. So, my lady, I. Respect request that it be marked as. Yes, as this is marked eight. exhibit H. We, we will not use I, my lady. Thank you. 14. The affidavit in terms of section 2123 of Act 51 of 1977 of Elizabeth Joanna Diaga correctly refers to the records of the weather conditions that prevailed for the Pretoria East area on 14 February 2013 during the hours of 3. Next, here to mark exhibit J. Lady, likewise, Ian Glenn van Ness, with reference to the investigation of the crime, correctly report as follows that no injuries consistent with blunt force trauma were not noted at the post mortem examination, which would have resulted in external <coughs> blood loss. Lady, there was, was another paragraph. That was deleted, so may I respectfully ask that the word and just be deleted. Yes, what paragraph is this again? 15. 15. 15, 1, my lady. Okay. 15. 15. 15, 1, my lady, ends with the word and. May I respectfully request that the and just be deleted. Thank you. I've done that. This is 16. Yes. The certificate in terms section 2124A and 2128A of the Criminal Procedure Act 51 of 77, as certified by Estelle Mariana Daisel, correctly reports a concentration of alcohol in the specimen of blood that was taken from the accused on 14 February to be 0 grams per 100 milliliter. A copy of this certificate is annexed here to mark K. My lady, it's under what we mark J and K. May I respectfully ask that the affidavit ask that the affidavit of Estelle Marianne Daisel be marked as K. It's the last statement under J and K. Yes, I found it. This is Exhibit K. As a good business. The analytical report compiled by Dr. P.J. van der Merwe with reference to the result of two urine samples obtained from the accused on 14 February 2013 correctly reports that no substances comprised of anabolic steroids, stimulants, narcotics or diuretics could be detected in the sample, sample so analyzed. A copy of this analytical report is annexed here to mark exhibit L. 
Lady, we found it on the L. May I request that it be marked L? Yes, that's uh, Peter <coughs> van der Merwe. Is yeah. that the one? Indeed, van der Merwe. Yes. This is Exhibit L. The book pieces. As far as count three is con concerned, it's an admission. A shot went off whilst the firearm was in the possession of the accused. As far as count four is concerned, the accused at all times relevant to count four had not been issued with a license to possess 0.38 caliber rounds of ammunition. As a good pieces, that then the admissions in terms of section two. Three. Thank you very much. Mr. Ru, do you confirm the admissions? It is indeed confirmed. Thank you, Ms. Thank you very much. Thank you. The state then ready to call its first witness, my lady. I call Michelle Berger, number 18, 80, on the list of witnesses. Yes. Before you do that, there's no opening address? Uh, I will do so, my lady. If, if the court would require me to do that, I will, I will indeed do so. Lady and learned assessors, this matter deals with an incident that took place in the early hours of 14 February. Uh, the accused, the state's version, shot and killed the deceased, as indicated in 286 Bushwillow country, uh, in, in the country states as indicated. They were the only two people in the house, my lady. There were no eyewitnesses. The state's case is based on circumstantial evidence that includes evidence of what the neighbors in the accused estate as well as neighboring estates heard. We will lead ballistic and forensic evidence. We will, we will also argue that there's certain inference to be drawn from the scene. Lady, we argue that the accused version during the bail application and today is cannot be reasonably possibly true, should be rejected, and as the only inference from the circumstantial evidence would be that the accused shot and killed the deceased with direct intent to kill. <coughs> if there's no eyewitnesses, my lady, based on circumstantial evidence. Thank you. Thank you very much. As a court pieces, I then call Michelle Bergen. Yes. My lady, may I? There, there was a judgment indicating that all witnesses that gave evidence, evidence could be uh, recorded and shown, audiovisual recordings. My lady, we've objected on behalf of this witness, yes. and the ruling was that this particular witness and the ones that would follow, that I would include the court, uh, that would inform the court about, this evidence should not be recorded and shown, yes. either on a video recording or still focused. My lady, my lady there's then a second issue. We not only have this court, we also have an overflow court. So I beg uh, the court's uh, finding that the court would um, <coughs> the court would order that also in the overflow court, yes. the witness's face is not shown. Okay. The, the overflow, the, the hearing us, aren't they? The overflow court can hear us, my lady, yes. The, the part of this, this yes, procedure. Indeed, my lady. Yes. So it does apply. I do order that the face of this witness should not be shown. As a court case. Yes. Is there anything else? That, that's it. No, that's it. Thank you. She testifies in Africa, so, uh, your ladyship. Volle naam en vorm. Michelle Berger. Enige besorgd in die afle van die voorgeskrewe eet? Nee. Besko u dit bindend op u gewete? Graag. Soor u dat die getuienis wat u gaan afle die waarheid, die volle waarheid, en niks anders as die waarheid sal wees nie, steek op u rechterhand en sê, so help my God. So help my God. My lady, we... You, you may be seated if you so wish. We will lead the witness in English. The witness would respond in Afrikaans. Yes, thank you. 
Business are you in? I'm a docent um, by the University of Pretoria. I'm a lecturer at the University of Pretoria. In which department, madam? I is by the Department Construction Economy. I'm at the Department Construction Economics. Economics. Madam, the accused before court is uh, Mr. Oscar Pistorius. Do you know him? My lady, I've never met him before. Before this incident, madam, did you know where he stayed? I did know that he was staying in the Silver Woods estate, but I did not know where. Madam, on the 14th of February 2013, where did you stay? I was in Silver Stream in Pretoria. I was My lady, I stayed in the Silver Stream estate on that date, and I am still staying there. <laughs> and who shares the house with you, madam? My man, Joel Peter Johnson. It's my husband, Shaw Peter Johnson. He stays with me. How long have you been staying there, madam? We moved in in 2011, my lady. Now, your estate and the Silver Woods estate, um, are they next to each other? Ja, dus aangrenzend tot mekaar. My huis is teen die grens van die Silverwoods landgoed in Silverstream is tyd. Yes, they are next to each other. My huis is grenzend. My huis is next to the uh, a border of the Silverstream and the Silverwoods is tyd. Now madam, This matter deals with an incident that happened on the 14th of February 2013, early morning hours. You know that? Yes, I do. Now, on the evening of 13 November, uh, 13 February 2013, anything special at your house by that? It was a aunt, so it's in a other aunt, geweest. Ek my man was by the house, geweest. Um, ons het aunt eten geëet, ek het kos voorbereid. En ons het gewone tyd gaan slaap, wat gewoonlik tussen 9 hier en 10 hier is. Just, just one minute. Okay. Give Miss Bosch a uh, time to interpret, please. My lady, it was, an, it was an evening like any other evening. We were at home, uh, we ate dinner, I prepared food, and we went to bed at uh, our normal hours, which is between 9 and 10. <coughs> then, madam, what happened? Die edele net na drie die ochend het ek wakker geword van een vrou se verskriklike gille. My lady, just after three, I woke up uh, from a woman's terrible screams. Ek het recht opgesit in die bed. En my man het ook wakker geword van die gille. I sat upright in bed and my husband also woke up uh, from the screams. My man had opgesprung in balkon to hard look. My I, husband jumped up and uh, went to the balcony. I could not need bait by sit. I could not hear. I was still sitting uh, in the bed and I heard her screams. And said, I'm not going to nod. You'd have to slow down a little bit. You're still sitting in the bed, yes. You were saying? <coughs> She screamed terribly and she uh, yelled for help. I had learned to work a man, work a mop group, I drink your help, Chris Crea. 
Then I also heard a man screaming for help and he three times. Uh, three times he yelled for help. Yes, and then? Die edle, ek sê toe vir my man, het, ek skreef vol met help nie, hy staan op die balkon nie. Hy moet terugkom na die kamer toe, dat ons die tijd kan ontbied. I then told my, my husband that it, it doesn't help him standing uh, on the balcony, he must come back into the room and that we should call the security. Yes. Die edle, my man het toe teruggekom en ek het my cellfoon is langs die bed. Ek het toe my cellfoon gevat en ek het security op die phone gedruk. Um, my husband came back into the room, my, my cell phone was next to my bed, I took my cell phone and then I dialed uh, for security. And you, you uh, dialed security, what did you do with your phone? Die edle, ek het toe vir my man gegeen, dat hy kan praat met die sekuriteit, want ons is in Silvestrie in die stuit, en ek het gedink, ek moet Silvestrie in sekuriteit bel, so dat hulle Silver Woods kan ontbied, en sê daar is a huis aanval, mense word aangeval in die huis, want dis wat ons gedink het, as volk okay. in gille. Ok, let's get that. I gave my phone to my husband so that he can speak to them because we stay in Silver Stream Estate and I thought that uh, our security should call Silver Woods Estate uh, to tell them that there was an attack in a house then. my man het toe op die phone gepraat en vir die sekuriteit persoon wat aan die ander kant was verduidelik mense word langs aan aangeval, hulle moet asjeblief gaan kyk uh, my lady, my husband talked on the phone and explained to the security that there are people uh, next door being attacked and that they uh, should go there yeah Die edle my man het toe die story herhaal, want die sekuriteit op die foon het toe die foon vir iemand anders te gegee en my man het die hele story toe herhaal en gesê van die aanval in die huis. My lady, my husband repeated the story because the, the phone was given to another person so my husband explained, the, uh, repeated the story um, and explained that someone is being attacked in, the, in a house. Yes. Your, your husband repeated the story and what happened then? Die edle, hy het toe vir my gesê, um, dis troep en kop sekuriteit, dis die verkeerde sekuriteitsnummer wat ons gebel het, dis die plek waar ons voorheen gewoon het, en hy die voor neergegooi. He then told me that it's troep en kop security, it's a, um, the security of a place where we lived previously, uh, he said it's the wrong security and he, he dropped the phone. Die edle my man het die teruggehaard het na die balkon toe, ek sit nog steeds in die bed en toe hoor ek weer al gille en het was erger as voorheen, dit was meer intens. Ok. Uh, my husband then ran back to the balcony, I was still sitting in bed, I heard her screams again, it was You can follow the whole of Oscar Pistorius' murder trial as... <coughs> Sy was vrees bevangen geweest, dit is die ergste, dit was dus een klimax. Ek het al angst gehoor en ek het geweet iets gaan kom, iets verskrikkeliks gebeur in daar die huis. Uh, apologies my lady, may I ask her to just repeat yes. what you said? Yes, repeat. Kan nie net vir my raad? You were saying, um, the, the screams were more intense <coughs> and the jerks. It, it, it was a climax. It, it, was, she was very scared. It was screams that was at climax. Okay. And what <coughs> happened then? Die edle, na haar gille, enkele oomlikke nade het die skote geklap, daar was vier skote gewees. Die tyd is in die eerste en die tweede skoot was een bykie langer, as dis in die tweede en die derde en die derde en die vierde skoot. Just after her screams, uh, my lady, I heard four shots. 
Um, it was four shot, uh, gunshots that I heard. Uh, the time between the first and the fourth shot was much longer than between the second and the third one. There were four shots. You, uh, you said the first... Could you perhaps give us a demonstration by using BAM? It was a bad example. Bang! Bang, bang, bang. There was a greater pause between 1 and 2 as between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4. There was a, a longer pause between number 1 and 2 than between number 2 and 3 and 3 and 4. I will work for the opening. I was not a stopper, Lucy Dorney, but I can say the type is in number one and two. It was longer as this in two and three and three and four. My lady, I was not there with the stopwatch, but I can tell the court that the pause between one and two was much longer than number two and between number two and three and three and four. And what happened then after the shots, madam? I will my man. I was back to the camera. I was still in the bed where I sat. My lady, my husband returned then from the balcony and I was still sitting in bed. I said to my man, I hope that that woman has now not seen how her man is dead. Because we didn't hear her help. So I thought that he was dead. Then I told my husband that I would be dead. Do not hope that that woman saw her husband being shot in front of her because after he screamed for help, we did not hear him again. What happened after that, madam? I was just, I was just in my car on. I had slept. I was wakker and I had slept. I had opgestaan die volgende ochtend, soos gewoonlik. My lady. It was a confusing evening because I was sleeping and then I was awake and then I was uh, sleeping again and then the next morning I woke up again, or I got up again. My normal time. My normal time, I woke up. My man was busy on her to do it. He had to think that he had to get out of the security when he was on the phone. Um, I was preparing for work Mommy, and my husband it, was eh? upstairs oh, uh, doing measurements because he thought that uh, he Family should have to increase. My husband was not upstairs. Uh, he was up and was busy doing measurements in the house. Madam, before we continue, um, can you just uh, have a look at this file? <coughs> If you have a file with you, you can open an F. How do you refer to this file? Indeed, uh, my lady. How do you identify it? It's Exhibit F, my lady. <coughs> oh. It's photographs. I'll refer the witness to, to that. Give us one minute. Just above. It's just above the T. Yes. Yes, we've got That's good. Please, please, page 921. Slide 921. <coughs> well, ladies, simultaneous with, with a reference to the exhibit, it will be screened on, on all the different screens in court as well. Thank you. Uh, madam, having regard to that aerial photograph, 921, uh, can you confirm where your house is? Yes, I can. 
Uh, Malaysia, I'll just put on record. Uh, the <coughs> witness is pointing towards a roof um, just above 46A Trevor Crescent. The roof she's referring to is just above the T yes, of I Trevor Crescent. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. And <coughs> if looking at the photograph and just, just look at the numbers, the 191 and 193 would be in what estate would they, they be? The estate next door. The Edler that's all in Silver Woods, yes, and also Steeny Grains from Silver Springs. It would be in Silver Woods because we are just next to the border of Silver Woods. Let us then go to photograph 930930. Are you there, man? Do you get like a star? Does it look yes. familiar? Yeah, that is my balcony. Yes, it's my balcony. <coughs> yeah. If we just explain to the court, you in your evidence said your husband went to the balcony. <coughs> Which balcony did you refer to? I'm referring to this balcony on this photo. Yeah. <coughs> The house you're staying in, is it a one or two story house? The Edler is a double for deeper eyes. It's a two story house. And this balcony is on which floor? The Edler is a big one for deeper. It's on the top level. There is a little red arrow. Does that look familiar to you? Yeah, the Edler, that is. But I can when you also got the story sizes, the bad corner, and size. Yes, from what I understand, that is uh, where Mr. Oscar Pistorius' house is, his uh, bathroom. bathroom. Let's just turn the page to 931. <coughs> that view, does it look familiar to you? Yeah, I had that is what from my balcony I've genomed. Yes, that was also taken from my balcony, my lady. And you confirm the red arrow again? The edle, that is Mr. Oscar Pistorius' house. My lady, that is Mr. Oscar Pistorius' house. And number 932, <coughs> madam. The edle, I understand, that is the camera fenster of Mr. Pistorius' house. If you're on the balcony, could you see that specific house? Yeah, Edla. Yes. Good. Madam, now the your bedroom. <coughs> On which floor of the house is that? Edla, my slaapkamer is op die boonste verdiepe en die vensters kyk uit na die Silverwoods landgoed toe. My bedroom is on uh, the second level and uh, the windows uh, face, out. Face, towards. Face, face towards the Silverwoods estate. windows in your, in your room? My lady, I had bedroom windows which was wide open because we do not have air conditioning in the bedroom. Or a fan. Or a fan. the next day I just want to go back to the screens you've heard um, did that have any effect on you it was verschrikkelijk traumatisch geweest die angst was bloedstollende gille geweest ek het 
Het is die type ding wat jou koud laat, jy kan dit nie mooi oordra aan iemand nie, dit was verskrikkelijk, die angst in haar stem. It was uh, very traumatic for me. Uh, you could hear that it was blood curdling screams and um it leaves you cold you can't translate it in work the the anxiousness in her voice fear. The, and fear let us then carry on you said that the next day you got up normal time when you got up did you know what happened Die edle, ek het nie geweet, ek het gedink is huispraak, ek was oortuig, ek en my man, mens is aangeval in die huis, in Silverwood, dis wat ons gedink het. I was not aware, uh, I thought it was a housebreaking, we thought, my husband and I thought uh, that someone was attacked in the house in uh, the Silverwood estate. And what did you do, madam? Die edle, ek het my werk toe gegaan soos enige ander dag, Ek het toe ook een vriendin gebel op pad werk toe. I went to work like with any other day and I also called a friend on my way to work. Jy? Die eerste my vriendin sy kind is in die Silverwoods kleterskool so ek het haar gebel om vir haar te vraag, kan sy asjeblief uitvind wat het gebeur en ek het haar die story vertel. My friend's child is in the Silverwood uh, nursery school and I asked her if it's possible if she could find out what happened. And you also said you told her the story. Is reg, u edle, ek het vir haar die story vertel. That is correct, I told her the story. What story did you tell her? Don't repeat the story, but what story did you tell her? Die edle, ek het al vertel van die vrou sy verskrikkelijke gille en die skote. My lady, I told her about uh, the woman's terrible screams and the, the gunshots that I heard. Die edle, ek het vir haar gevra, ek wil hoor of iemand dood is en wat het gebeur. I asked her, I want to uh, find out if someone uh, died and what happened. And then what happened? Jy het lekker toe by die universiteit aangekom en ek het vir een collega Dr. Boshoff gesien. Ek het die universiteit en ek so een kolleg, Dr. Boshoff. Jy het lekker toe, ons het maar gesels soos elke ochend. Hy het gevraag, hoe gaan het en ek het om verteld vir my slechte nacht. We talked like every morning en I told him about the bad morning that I had. Bad night. Apologies. Yes. Jy het lekker ook een ander collega gesien, Vita Wilkins, en ek het vir haar ook vertel, ons het gesels in die ochend, ek het al vertel van die huisbraak, dat ek toe gedink het huisbraak was, wat ek gewoon. Wat is die ander collega's nie? Vita Wilkins. I also saw another colleague, Vita Wilkins and we talked and I told her of the the house breaking I thought took place the previous night. Yes. Die edle en ek het toe begin werk en later het my man my geskakel. I started working and then later on my husband called me. Yes. Die edle het vir my gevra of ek kan onthou wat die korrige aand gebeur het en ek het gesê natuurlijk. He asked me if I could remember what happened the previous night, and I said yes. Die edel en ek het om te vertel, soos wat ek het gehad het, soos wat ek in die hoofd verduidelik het. I then told him as I just explained to the court. Die edel en ek het... Die edel en ek het vir my gesê, hy het nou net by die kantoor gehoor, hy het nou net achtergekom, meneer Oscar Pistorius is op die nies en hulle sê, hy het gedink dat as een inbreker en toet hy sy meisie doodgeskiet. He then told me that at the office he just heard that Mr. 
Oscar Pistorius is on the news and he thought that there was an intruder and then he shot his girlfriend. Just uh, one minute. Yes. Is this just hold on? Sorry. This is not here hearsay evidence. Her husband will, will, will be a witness. Will be. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very it was too up in geweest. My man had too in his after It was on the news and then my husband only then realized. And when you heard that, what did you think? I like it for my man to say it can't be seen when it rains. Me, when it was on I told my husband that it cannot be because it's not. Uh, it's not wrong. It with was. Heard. It's not what we heard. Uh, Madam, how did how did it come about that you made a statement to the police? I had like it years later a declaration after leave, and I won't even so be with me. I only made a statement later on because I do not live in Silverwood. In ons was oortuig gewees dat sy mense in Silverwood wees wat sy gehoor het want het was baie duidelik vir ons wat gebeur het. And uh, we thought that there would be people in Silverwood that he stayed that heard that would testify. That would testify because we are not in that estate. Because we are not in that estate. Ik heb mijn man ik heb mijn man niet weggegaan tijdens die voorvoer en ons het die voorvoer op die radio gehoor. Uh, we went away uh, during is it uh, pre trial. The, we went away during the pre trial and we um, on the radio. And uh, we heard of the pre trial on the radio. You refer to mm. something as a pre-trial, but you heard a judgment on the radio. That's correct, Iedla. That is correct. And Iedla, on the radio, we heard that there was a van a getuie that was 600 meters away. We came back to the station, we didn't go too far from Mr. Pistorius, because there was a light photo on the TV of our house. Uh, we heard on the radio of a witness that stays 600 meters far and uh, we then realized that we do not stay that far from Mr. Pistorius because we saw an aerial photo on the television of our house. Yeah. <coughs> Die edle vader by ons werke um, het allemaal toe nou besef hoe belangrijk ons getuie is want ons collega's het gehoor van Wat ons gedink in die huispraak is voor baie van ons geweet het, dit is meneer Pistorius. At our uh, workplaces we then realized how important our testimony is because our colleagues heard of the housebreaking before we knew uh, before we knew that it was Mr. Pistorius. And then what did you do? Jy het ons ons het toe um, we probeer uit vind wat ons moet doen. Ons is nie eindelijk media mense nie. Dit is vir ons erg om hier te wees. Ons is private mense. Um, we then try to find out what we should do. We are not really media people. It's it's difficult, it's for, difficult for us to be here. Jy het laat ek toe een prokureur gebel en ook advocaat um, Nicky Marits wat ek ken. I then contacted an attorney as well as an advocate that I knew, Nicky Marits. Die edel om advies te kry oor verklaring, hoe moet ons maak om een verklaring af te lewe? To get advice regarding the statement, how we should go about to give a statement. Die edel, want ons het gehoor, as ons na die politiestasie toe gaan, dan die media op daardie stadium was baie erg. Ons wou dit het privaat gehou het. We heard that uh, when we go to the police station, the media at that stage, it was... Very intense. very intense and we want to do it we wanted to do it privately uh, advocate Marit told us that we should write down our statement and then they after we could get together but before that, the police knocked on our door one evening. One evening. <coughs> and you made a statement with the police when they came back? 
Die edle die um, polisie was toe daar, hulle het met ons gepraat en hulle het gesê um, at um, kaptein Mark van Aert sal hulle draai by ons maak om die verklaring af te neem. Uh, the police was there and they talked to us and then they informed us that Captain Mike van Aert uh, will come to get the statement from us. And did that happen? Die edle dit was so, um, Kaptein van Aert het gekom en ek het uh, eerst was hy, het hy geconsulteer met my man, apart. Hy het sy verklaring afgele en toe later met my. Uh, that is correct. Uh, Captain Van Aert was there. He firstly consulted with my husband separately and uh, took the statement and then consulted with me. Madam, there there will be other witnesses in this matter. Uh, like it uh, nooit ontmoet nie ek. The Stip family. <coughs> Did you know them before this incident? Jy het like het hulle gehad nie geken nie. Ek het hulle week of twee terug vir die eerste keer ontmoet. I did not know them at all. I first met them about a week or two ago. Die edle net toe ek die hof besoek het om te sien hoe lyk die hof. It was when I visited the court just to see how the court looks. There also be uh, the witnesses um, van de Mervis. Did you know them? Jy het like het hulle nog nooit ontmoet nie, ek het hulle volgend vir die eerste keer gesien. I have never met them, I have saw them the first time this morning. My lady, it's 10 to 1. May I inconvenience the court and ask that we take an early lunch? Yes. Be back at 10 to 2. And I just want to go through the notes. I'm sure I'm done. I just want to go through the notes and then we can proceed from there, my lady. Yes, thank you very much. There's no objection to this <coughs> request? I don't think it will help me, my lady, but no, thank you. Very wise. <laughs> Hey, Milo. Sorry. Right. I think we'll do the one.